Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IX. Last time we had just arrived in Lindblom and now the party is split off and gone to see different parts of the city. Uh, Garnet is back in the castle with Sid, Steiner and Vivi are out on their own, and Zidane is rejecting the small portion sizes of the fine dining establishments in the castle and the more uh, upper class areas of Lindblom, and he's opted instead to come down and grab some nice greasy bar food. Uh, I think this is in the trade district of Lindblom. The city is smartly subdivided into multiple districts that we'll see uh, some of later. Uh, we're gonna hit the town after we get out of the bar. Uh, but this woman at the bar is calling us out for creeping on uh, some waitress and she clearly seems to be important because she has way more character design elements going on than anyone else here. Uh, she's also noticeably higher resolution. She's using a much higher poly count model <laughs> uh, than the dude behind the bar with the really long mustache he was twirling earlier or uh, the waitress, or the drunk guy in the background. And that is because this is our girl, Freya. Also notably the only left-handed character in the game. Freya is so damn good. Since we got that introduction to screen, you know that eventually she's going to be in the party. But for now... She's just going to tell us a little bit about the Festival of the Hunt. And uh, she and Zidane seem to have some kind of history. She also hails from Bermesia, which, again, is one of the other neighboring kingdoms bordering Alexandria. But she has no reason to go back, so she's just drifting for now. And um, we cut back to the throne room where Sid has some really really important exposition for us we also I believe we learned this before but just in case you didn't catch it before uh, Dagger's father passed away some time ago and it seems to have affected her mother rather seriously Queen Braun but Sid has some other important information for us and the information is that he is the one who orchestrated the kidnapping. So this this conversation, this exposition dump is super important. Uh, Sid orchestrated the Tantalus kidnapping of Garnet because he felt that she was in danger in that her mother, the queen, was becoming increasingly unstable. And then this is also an important little recap because it makes all of the implication from before very, very explicit. Uh, Queen Braun of Alexandria is manufacturing black mages in Dali to use as an army. Uh, Sid feels pretty secure because Lindblom has a fleet of airships. So they have aerial superiority. They feel pretty uh, secure in their borders from any kind of black mage invasion uh, from Alexandria. Still felt like Dagger was in danger back in the castle. Now we're going to learn a little bit more about what happened to Sid because we know from last time uh, Sid is not naturally an Oglop. He was transformed into one when he was attacked in the middle of the night. And the reason for that is that he was flirting around having an affair with a woman from a pub and his wife, Hilda, found out and, you know, turned him into an Oglop and made off with his, like, magnum opus of an airship, the Hildegard. He's trying to work on another one, but... As an Oglop, his mind is not what it used to be. But 
once things are, are in order with the south gate and everything, they're going to go back to Alexandria. They are going to escort Garnet there under their protection and hopefully talk some sense into the queen. Uh, meanwhile, Zidane got some rest after uh, getting chewed out by Freya at the bar. And Vivi is still a little shaken. You can you can tell. And we learned something else very important, noted by all these things highlighted in blue. Uh, there is a Tantalus hideout in the theater district here in Lindblom. All right, Vivi is gonna go off and do his own thing, see Lindblom for himself. And we are going to get this little tutorial about synthesis at a, a very odd timing. Oh, no, no, I remember why we get this tutorial now. Because the very first synthesis shop that we're going to come across is actually right here in Lindblom. Uh, and we can go there pretty soon. Uh, synthesis is a system by which you combine items together in order to get new upgraded stuff. Uh, and it's this smart way of making every item feel important and not just like, oh, this isn't an upgrade for me, I guess it's just vendor trash. Uh, it lets you extract value out of your old gear without just being a trite upgrade system, but it still fulfills the same purpose of an upgrade system. That's the other reason, that's uh, the other reason why um, the ability system in this game is also quite smart. It lets you extract value out of things that are not strictly upgrades. And what Steiner is saying here uh, really is apt. He's, he's kind of lost in this gigantic city. And he's not wrong about Lindblom either. Uh, it's it's quite large. What I love about Lindblom and a lot of FF9's towns is that they aren't just RPG towns. Uh, they're towns in an RPG that feel like lived-in places full of characters with their own agency and this enormous breadth of, of sights and sounds. We're going to see some of those now. Uh, there's one thing in particular that I definitely want to get to. Uh, lock. Oh, Lock! Yeah, yeah, yeah. FF6 reference. Uh, he tells us about the uh, air cabs that ferry you between districts. That is also, on top of being a clever fast travel method, it's also a way of making the city feel bigger than it feels physically is in game by implying that it's so large and so confusing that you need this uh this uh this monorail basically this system of rapid transit in order to get between the districts efficiently oh we're gonna learn a little bit more about the festival of the hunt while vivi is off on a shopping trip you know, I'm, I'm really coming to appreciate these active time events more uh, as I play through this. God, it's it's been so long since my last full playthrough of FF9, and I regret that. We don't want to be here just yet. We want to see more of this district. Um, because I remember back when I did the FF8 LP, I mentioned that I play FF8 like once a year. And as of late, it's maybe once every two years, but I still play through FF8 to the credits pretty frequently but FF9 like I'll start it up every now and then but I I the last time I finished it was probably like six or seven years ago I think I've beaten FF9 only twice which is insane for how much I love this game how much fondness I feel towards it but there is always going to be that thing of like FF8 holds that special place in my heart, even though I will always acknowledge FF9 as being the best one and FF8 being the second best. FF8's the one that got me into the series, though. I think this is the shop that I really want to be in. 
Aha. Remember a guy with a spike with spiky hair who carried a sword like this. Even though none of those really resemble a buster sword, we understand that that is a cloud reference. And it's not going to be the only cloud reference in the game either. Far from it. Uh, there is a really cute reference to uh, both the main characters of 7 and 8 in the final moments of the game. So, we've been talking a little bit about FF8 and FF9. Uh, so while one team at Square was finishing up Final Fantasy VIII, Final Fantasy IX was just beginning production. And again, because they knew that Final Fantasy IX would be the last single-digit Final Fantasy, um, and that it would be the last one on the original PlayStation, you know, that, that meant a lot to them. Oh, and this is the store that Vivi was shopping in before. This is just the uh, provision shop. This really was meant to be uh, a, a culmination. Is why you can feel so much love and all of this reverence and nostalgia packed into it. Remember Sakaguchi saying that this was uh, his ideal view of what Final Fantasy should be. Oh, this is the synthesis. Synth <laughs> this is the synthesis shop. Uh, let's see. We can make the ogre with two mage mashers. We could go back and buy another mage masher, but ah, I'm gonna hold off on that. I think we will make one cotton robe. Uh, desert boots. I think we, we will get a pair of those later. So we're good on that front. Uh, they said that they wanted to give the feeling of this being uh, a series watershed. Uh, I think the another phrase they used for it was a grand collection. Like, they talked about that stuff a lot. They really, really took a lot of pride in the series. Uh, in its origins in how far they made it from, you know, being in kind of a poor financial position when Final Fantasy was first a glimmer in, in Sakaguchi's eyes. They took a lot of pride in everything about the series, and that's so totally evident. Uh, so FF9 has always been the most nostalgic game in the series. Not just the game that people are most, no most nostalgic for. Four, even. But the game that's most sentimental about its own roots. Uh, and it comes across in this really light, airy way that diffuses through everything. Like, you feel it. The game has, has this, I want to say, effervescence. It's, it's so many things coming together. And it just transports you to this nice, warm, fuzzy, light place. And it helps that I think this is one of, if not the best, Uematsu soundtrack. I'm not... I'm not sure if anything quite beats the magnum opus that was dancing mad uh, as far as the individual tracks but just the mood that this soundtrack sets is phenomenal Final Fantasy 9 is a love letter to Final Fantasy and it holds so much romance for its own history but at the same time like it never it never stumbles into being like uh, self filating it's, it's a loving homage that also just stands on its own. But fuck, Final Fantasy IX is stellar. I, I adore this game. And the craft and everything. Oh, it's so good. Really, really happy about this LP. Just to be doing this and to be... Fuck, fuck it. To be experiencing Final Fantasy IX again. Jesus, I am happy about that. 
Uh, so by the way, we are back in the Tantalus hideout, or rather, we are, we are in the Tantalus hideout in the theater district of Lindblom for the first time. Uh, and Zidane is just kind of leaning up against the wall like the Fonz, passing time, trying to be a cool guy. He is not, but we love Zidane. We love Zidane because he is not a cool guy. I feel like they wanted Squall to be that cool guy, <laughs> but he was not. <sighs> Don't you love it? <laughs> the the magnetizing power of shitting on Squall is so alluring that even here <laughs> in FF9, I love it. And so Dagger's right back into her predicament from before, where she's being overly protected. She's being herded and caged. Um, and everyone thinks that it's for her own good, but she hates it. She hates being cooped up. And she also just wants to be able to help uh, her mother. And uh, is, is not able to do that in her current situation. So she feels, on top of being cooped up, she feels helpless. On Lucella and Bunce? Bunce! Bunce? Really, Bunce? Bunce. Bunke. Uh, teasing Zidane about Dagger. Fucking Bunce. Get out of here, Bunce. More strange amounts of gill. Uh, and a mini Burmesia. Burmesia, again, being that other kingdom bordering Alexandria and Lindblom. We got one more active time event before we probably close things out uh, and head back to the castle in the air cab. This one is going to be following Baku and uh, the Tantalus crew from Alexandria. This is an especially gorgeous background. And we have no idea what they're doing here, or even where they are. But what's important is that we know that they made it out of the evil forest. So we know they're okay. Uh, the only one we know for sure was, was petrified inside of the forest was blank. place this theme, but it definitely sounds familiar. Does anyone know what this music is? Or if this is a reference to a previous Final Fantasy game? I think especially with the Tantalus screw, you always have to look out for the referential music. This could just be an original for this scene, but it sounds like something. I'm just not exactly sure what. So we are going to take Zidane and pilot him back to the air cab station, and we are going to go back to uh, Lindblom Castle and meet back up with Garnet. Uh, and we will progress the story. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.